So I'm just headed out to the mountains right now to go for a little hike in the forest and uh, we'll talk to you about Bill C205. So this is Bill C205 here. This is a private member's bill introduced by uh, John Barlow. Uh, you can see in the summary here, it basically said the enactment of the health of Animals Act to make it a fence to enter without lawful authority or excuse a place in which animals are kept if doing so could result in the exposure of these animals to a disease or a toxic substance that is capable of affecting or contaminating them. So this is kind of the uh, the disguise of this bill. They're, they're pretending that uh, this is all about biosecurity and the protection of these animals from disease. Let's uh, scroll a little bit further along here. You don't want to expose animals to a disease or toxic substance. That would make that. But listen to this. No person shall without lawful authority or excuse enter a building or other enclosed place in which animals are kept knowing that or being reckless as to whether entering such a place could result in the exposure of these animals to a disease or a toxic substance that is capable of affecting or contaminating them. So this isn't even uh, an act to punish people that that infect animals with substances or a disease. This is, even if there's a chance of that happening, you're guilty of this. So this just kind of tells you um, what kind of penalty you're facing. So this is an interesting part. This is uh, what we call a hybrid offense in Canada, meaning that the Crown can proceed either summarily or by indictment. It's, uh, it's very sh surprising here that this is a hybrid offense. So what this means is a summary is basically like Canada's version of a misdemeanor. It's a lesser offense. Um, usually it carries no jail time if they're exceeding six months, I guess it says here. If they proceed summarily, the max you're, gonna, you're going to uh, face on this bill is six months in jail. And um, if you're indictable, then you can get up to a $250,000 fine or a two-year prison term. So... Just remember that for later in the video, I'm going to refer back to this. But uh, basically, they can go either way with the, the conviction. They can, they can try to indict you, or they can proceed summarily, where it's, it's just a uh, lesser offense. So another thing, difference between summary indi and indictment is just the time you have to wait to, uh, in order to be eligible for a pardon afterwards. Uh, to be eligible for a pardon on a summary conviction, it would be five years wait after all of your criminal charges are dealt with and all your fines are paid. Whereas an indictable offense could be up to 10 years to wait in order to be eligible. And also if you receive three indictable offenses, which uh, where the jail term exceeds two years, you will never be eligible for a pardon. So I'm just here in Kananaskis country, and I'm uh, gonna go for a little walk in the forest. Oh geez, look at this. You know, I'm freaking million miles from anyone, and they still want me to practice physical, disting. F physical distancing. I mean, how much more physically distant can I get? So John Barlow, he's a member of parliament for, with the Conservative Party of Canada. His riding is in uh, southern Alberta, in the riding of Foothills, which uh, includes the town of Fort McLeod, which just happens to be the place where Liberation Lockdown 1 took place in 2019. In case you're unaware of uh, what was happening in the animal rights movement in 2019, I'll fill you in. So, it was actually happening all over the world where activists were peacefully occupying places where animals were being abused. So including a couple in Canada. The first one was in April 2019. It was in Abbotsford, BC. They called the Meet the Victims Canada event. 
and the second one was a, a liberation lockdown event that happened in uh, September of 2019 that occurred in near Fort McLeod, Alberta. And the third event was November of 2019, where several activists occupied a, a dog facility where, where uh, dogs were being warehoused in the, for the sled dog industry. And uh, also, later in that year, there was uh, occupation near Montreal, Quebec as well. You know, what's very ironic about this bill is that uh, it's supported by both the Conservative Party and the NDP, federally. There are two basically on the opposite sides of the spectrum. Conservative being as far right as you get, NDP being about as far left. Well, of, of the major popular parties anyways. And uh, the Liberals, ironically enough, are the ones that are opposing this bill. So, the Liberals are basically saying that uh, we already have things, uh, methods in place to to keep to charge people that that do break these crimes or do break these laws. So, why do we need extra charges? And actually, they're right. You know, the uh, the activists involved with Liberation Lockdown One, Liberation Lockdown Two, and also the Meet the Victims event in Abbotsford, BC. They were all charged with breaking and entering, which is quite a serious offense in the Criminal Code of Canada. Breaking and entering, if, if prosecuted by indictment, can carry a life sentence up to. So, it's really strange that, that we need this bill. Typically, the way the court system works in Canada, what the police are going to do is they're going to charge you with the maximum they possibly can right off the bat. Because they know later that the court is going to make a deal or strike a deal to uh, give a lesser sentence. That's how, that's how they convince you to plea guilty instead of taking things to trial. The court is designed to make people plea guilty. So what somebody who would uh, go into a farm would now be facing is potentially a new criminal charge along with the break and enter. Because the court can say, or the police will say that uh, the person broke and entered to this property as well as put the animals in a biosecurity risk. You know, typically a court doesn't want to charge somebody twice for the same offense because it just doesn't make sense and usually one will end up getting thrown out if it's doubled up. But I could see this turning into a situation where they're just going to add as many charges as possible in order to convince people to plead guilty rather than to fight the system. And you know, we can't necessarily blame people for pleading guilty as well. It's uh, quite costly to go to court and to fight these things. You know, a constitutional challenge could run tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe even more. So, can't blame people for, uh, especially activists who, who don't have those kind of means to, uh, to just plead guilty. You know, the courts of law really aren't fair because the prosecution basically has unlimited resources sometimes, whereas the person being prosecuted only has very limited resources. You know, here in Alberta, we have our Premier just passed Bill 27 as well, which strengthens the uh, penalties for trespassing, makes them astronomically high. So, technically, if someone were in the wrong jurisdiction, they could also be facing provincial offenses too. Also in Ontario, they have Bill 156. One really concerning thing about Bill 27 in Alberta is it actually is designed to crack down on whistleblowers. What are we going to do at this point about this? Well, I'm not really sure there's not much we can do. You know, this, uh, this happened in Australia already, and it's just a matter of time. It seems like maybe our system here in Canada just works a little bit slower 
but don't worry, eventually it'll catch up and pretty soon we won't be able to expose any cruelty anymore or it will be a severe crime to do so. So it's actually gotten to a point here where it is now going to be more of an offense to expose cruelty on factory farms than the farmers actually perpetrating this cruelty. I'm not sure how this isn't going to completely erode the public's trust in the food system. If you're not allowed to see how your food is made, or the people that are going to expose that information are going to be punished, then how do you know what you're getting? How do you know that that the products that we're getting are, are good? Well, the fact that this bill is even needed just proves that vegans are right about this industry. I mean, I hear a lot of farmers say to me, oh, well, you know, it's, it's really nice on my farm. I treat my animals so well, and we do everything the right way. Well, if that is the case, then why, why do you need so many protections against people from, from uh, taking a video of... I think the fact that there's even a need for these bills just proves how terrible this industry is. Like, if it was so great, if these animals were treated so well, then why all the additional penalties for people who go and expose the cruelty that goes on? If I was a meat eater right now, I would have a serious think about why your government is trying to cover this up so badly. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories that goes around, but riddle me this, if you're a conspiracy theorist, then why, are, why do you trust your food system right now? Hey guys, if you liked the video, don't forget, you can uh, always support the work that I do here by donating to the Lucky Ones Sanctuary. They have several donation options, including Patreon, but you can also email transfer a donation as well. Um, remember to like, subscribe, share, and have a great day.